lost my best friend to 23 She left her body and hovered above me I saw no shadow, I looked around Searched every building and home that I found I saw no shadow, but felt the glow The warmth inside me kept me afloat Felt like heaven, I found my bones And gave me comfort when I feel alone Now you're gone, I'm alone I guess it's time to get better Through the pain, I will go alone If I fall, break my bones I will scream even louder Cause I'm not dying alone My best friend to 23 She left her body and hovered above me Dying again and again I went through hell Instead of death But I keep fighting with each living breath I saw no way out From where I stood Felt like the fire had burned me for Now yeah, you're gone I'm alone I guess it's time to get better Through the pain I will go alone Now to later what's going on nerds welcome back to another aggressively average episode uh we are excited to be talking about kayaks tonight in other words you can think of plastic floaty vessels on the waters uh we got a chance to go test out five models but i'm including a sixth one that paul spent like two days on entirely yeah. that's on the list here as well so these are some of like what we're seeing as the top ranked models you go and you search What's the best fishing kayak right now? It's likely one, if not most of these, are on that list. And uh, we're not going to mention a single Hobie tonight. That is, that's the rule that we put in place. So if you came here looking for one of those, that's not what we're talking about. We are rolling with some Old Town, Bonafide, and we have a new canoe in here, which was like unexpected because we weren't looking at them at all. But this one showed up at the test, uh, the test run lake, and uh, we got on it. It was pretty rad. So... And that's the deal tonight. We're going to be talking through those. We're going to talk price points, uh, our overall like first impressions of these kayaks, what we'd recommend, all that stuff. And I know there, there's going to be folks uh, as well looking for like the budget options. Maybe that's like a future episode that we do. This really wasn't intended to be that. This is kind of uh, the, the lineup we were looking at to replace our Hobies, right? We were trying to get into, hey, let's get into some different vessels. Let's try some stuff that people are are looking for if they're automatically like stiff arming the Hobie Pro Angler, which I totally get it. It's a very expensive boat. What's like this mid to upper range uh, of kayak? So we're looking at that basically 1500 to uh, I think the top one today is 4300 only because it has a motor on it. But mostly you're looking at that 15 to 25 hundred dollar range for these kayaks so think of it as an investment these are all boats that would last you a decade plus and you'd be very happy with them so that's what we're getting into uh i got paul here tonight paul how's the household is it in shambles or is it going swell because i have a story for my household (laughs) we had we had a water fight today because daycare got closed early so i was uh shirtless in the backyard getting drenched by all my neighbors kids and my kids um then we had uh, a bath night, which is always a special disaster. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully I wore them out enough to where they're just going to crash. So not a bad day, but uh, it's it's been a lot. I got my steps in. We'll just say that. Your life was like a water temple from... Oh, 100%. Yeah, 100%. percent There, You always are like, don't squirt anyone in the face. And then they only shoot people in the head. <laughs> of course. Was, like, what? Yep. Did you say don't? Or you said, you said do? You said whatever, fire. Do with a silent N apostrophe T. Got it. 100%. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> Paul actually, the funny story from my household today is that Paul actually gave me uh, his old microwave. And I have my old microwave now 
out in the garage ready to cook up some baits. We're working right now with Do It Molds. Hopefully we'll have some new products here that we can review for you guys and we can go cook some stuff up in the garages uh, very soon. That said, the new kayak, or new kayak, kayak did not get damaged. The microwave exploded a fuse on me like right after dinner between dinner and show. So I was like, okay, crunch time, got to get this microwave fixed. So I ran to the hardware store, got a fuse, came back, took my microwave apart, put the fuse back in, came in here and got ready for the show. Uh, it's been interesting. So without further ado, let's start talking about fishing stuff. Uh, quick shout outs to all the people who help us put on the show, uh, especially Monster Bass, who is sporting another $25 Schmift card for the Schmiv away tonight. Uh, hang out with us till the end of the show. We'll be doing that. That'll be good for anything on monsterbass.com, especially consider the rods. Go get a lunker stick. These things are freaking awesome. And very, very soon, we've got like one, one trial and tribulation to get through to get this ultralight kind of like on the production line. So we're hoping to get our ultralight <laughs> that it Over involves here, a scale buying, I'm buying some deflections. specialized equipment. <laughs> Accurate just... to within 1.001 1. 0. 0. 1, uh, grams. Yeah, which is absolutely necessary because we want to make sure this rod does exactly what we want it to do and what we're going to say that it does. So we're going to we're going to get that wrapped up uh we do have some prizes that we're going to be announcing we're going to have to wait till instagram though because today is the last day for the may edition of the knucklehead bass series so again we've been talking about this for a while you guys if you haven't gotten involved it's okay there's three more months so make sure you get on one of the next couple of months you can do a bundle and get all of the months if you want to uh we have some probably surefire winners and we want to do them justice and give them a nice announcement. So we'll do that next week on the live. Uh, we're going to wrap up kind of finalizing our prizes. We've got some really cool sponsors helping us out with this bass series to make sure we get a chance to get back to you guys. So uh, you're, you're going to be looking at prizes from the likes of Akuma. I got some reels, some hats, uh, Busby. We got some tackle boxes probably on the way there. Uh, and then we're going to put together a whole bunch of tackle as well. We've got shades from waterland sunglasses. Uh, all sorts of things. So there's going to be lots of goodies up on the line for those that win each month. And we will finalize that, get it announced, and get those prizes out as soon as we can. We can talk about that on next week's live. So, Chaz, put a pin in it. We're going to do that next week, yeah? <laughs> let's do it. All right, let's get into the Q of the D. Let's start talking about some kayaks, shall we? No, because Q of the D has nothing to do with kayaks at all. It's actually... Well, let's get through that. Then we'll talk about the kayaks, shall we? It's about <laughs> Dake. What is the best steak. cut of steak and why? Ooh, okay. So you got filet, strip, uh, you've got porterhouse, you've I mean there's there's tons of you like could Bubba go ribeye. Right ribeye. You got options. You got ribeye steak. You got for me, mignon. for me, I dude, it's between the filet and the porterhouse for me. Tomahawk, Tomahawk. is really good, but it's like who wants to spend the money, you know? Exactly. Um, I am, I'm, pro I am probably, I'm probably a porterhouse, but I'll be honest with you. If you're not, I feel like people that don't pick the filet, they just feel like it's too feminine and they're just trying to be super masculine. There's nothing. I'm going to pick the filet then. I would it's pick, I'm filet. actually, I'm going filet. It's a filet the done right? Like the, the porterhouse is a mouth. filet yeah. and a strip. The problem is, is you have to get a giant one to set to slake right. your hunger. Yep. The a big a big fillet is like friggin' oh god, it's so good. F fillet when it's done right melts in your mouth. Fantastic, one of my favorite things it, ever. Also, you know, what people, uh, you know what people are sleeping on? What? People are sleeping on next day cold fillet, like a rare cold yeah. fillet the next day sliced thin is like better, almost better than hot interesting willing to try it in the future <laughs> bro so Haley, yeah. Hey, yeah. for an anniversary dinner at one point uh we wanted to we got a bunch of filet. expensive restaurant yeah. and the filet was like lit legitimately this big it was huge massive massive so Haley ate like half of it i ate my whole porterhouse and that was as big as no my one's surprised chest. and then and then so then the next day Haley has to fly home yeah. to michigan and i'm in minneapolis so i'm like this filet is still here. And I, I was like oh, eating it like an apple. It was yep. unreal. So good. So I, I will stick to filet and I have, I have no problem saying it. 
Yeah, filet, fantastic. Porterhouse, I would say on a, on a what hungry, is a pink hungry day pink, for sure. Pink, What's a what? Pinkan, pinkana, pink, pickana, pinkana, pick, pick on ha. Are you having a stroke? Are you look okay? at John Gross? He says pick on ha is the most slept on. Pick and ha, pike and ha. I don't know how to say pick that word. Ha. No idea. <laughs> now you're doing it. Pick, pick, pick on ha. <laughs> the rest of the podcast is us just having a stroke, just trying to say this friggin' word. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Ribeye is a great answer. Strip died. is a great answer. There's no bad answer. Let's just be really clear here. Yeah. There's not like a cowboy steak might be the only bad answer. Like there's no bad answers. I think steak Robert Jones, Robert Jones is a good answer. A free one. You yeah. know, I, I would take a free is steak delicious. Any we day. got no. Oh God. I'm not going to say what that. All right. Moving Wagyu? on. Wagyu. Wagyu. Well, that's not a cut. It's just a deli- delicious type of meat. But anyways. Yeah. What is it though, Charles? Explain. I, that's not what it is. It's a Brazilian cut. It says it's really okay. good. I would try it. I would get it. I don't know. Yeah. I want it. Anytime I go to a Brazilian steakhouse, I'm like, send me all the meats. I, all right. I Everyone's immediately saying reach we're getting some sports. very bad. We're getting some very R rated answers. And I feel like it's time to move on. All right, cool. Well, that was fun. <laughs> as soon as you start talking about meat, <laughs> like ah. <laughs> that was fun, you guys. Chat, way to go. Uh, <laughs> don't worry. We're going to talk about fishing now. Let's get into right. some kayaks. So as I mentioned, we got out, we tested a whole bunch of kayaks. First of all, I got to give a shout out to uh, our boy Hunter, who helped hook us up with these. Thanks to DNR Sports, which is uh, in Kalamazoo, Michigan area. And they're super neat, super big warehouse. They have tons of tackle. They cover everything from ice to fly fishing to your conventional stuff. They have kayaks. They have boats. They have literally everything you could ever want for the great outdoors uh place is awesome definitely go check it out if you're in the area they do also have an online store paul do you remember the website for the online store shop kvd.com we had some great names for it but no it wasn't that i think it's like van damme warehouse yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you remember van damme uh, John Claude Van Dam Warehouse. Randy, Randy kidding. Jackson Van, Van Dam Warehouse dot com. That's what it is. Van Dam Warehouse dot com. So if you guys want to order some stuff, support those guys. They're awesome. Go check it out. Uh, but the cool thing was, I, I did some calling, and you'll probably see this in our video that we drop on Friday, where we actually take you out on these boats. We talk about our first impressions. We put them, you know, through a test on the water, and we give you our experience based off of that. It's just like our opinions, man. And what I did was I called a whole bunch of shops in the general vicinity. Unfortunately, there's nothing like right next door to us. So Kalamazoo, it was like an hour, hour 15. It wasn't even that bad to get out there. So we drive out there and uh, they had five models for us to test out. So what we did is we put the Bonafide SS-127, the RVR-119 from Bonafide as well, the Bonafide P-127, you could tell. We were like, do we like Bonafide? We don't know. Let's get on a few and see if we like them. It was top ranked for us as far as brand that we would be willing to switch out to from the Hobies, or at least like if we got an additional say paddle kayak, it's, it was probably going to be a bona fide. Right. And so we had to get on them, test them out. What they threw into the mix because they just had it available was the old town autopilot, which Paul and I have never been on before. I know lots of guys have been rocking those things for a while. They came out what, two years ago, three years, two and a half years ago at this point, a while ago, it feels like, so lots of people have been out putting content on that. Uh, we wanted to get in that. I just wanted to see if it was up to the hype. You know what I mean? Because the cost is still there. It's still cheaper than a Hobie, which is the craziest thing to lot. think about by a lot with an, a freaking eye pilot on it. Like, it's insane. Uh, so we tried that out. And then they also threw in the new canoe unlimited. I think we had a different boat uh, rigged up to go. And then we met them at the shop and we switched it out to this one. And we are like, you know what? Let's try this thing. Cause we wanted to have a different brand in there. So new canoe unlimited, uh, very cool boat. First impressions though. We were like, ah, there's no way we're going to like this thing until we got out on the water on it. So let's break down, uh, each of these models. Chaz, you're going to queue up a pick on the screen. Cool. So just given first impressions, and I'm just going in order of what's on our notes here. Um, Keep in mind the price point. I did say there's one or two that are quite a bit higher price point wise that might be outside the range for most people. They're not really something that we were necessarily looking at. They were available to us to 
give a shot on the water. Like that's mainly how they made it into that. So this is not a direct comparison. This isn't apples to apples. We get it. Uh, Paul did a, a pretty good review, like a nice long review on an old town pedal boat. And on a Hobie, he kind of compared the two in a video. People were like, these aren't the same boat. We know. Like, we get it. It's not the point. Like, we're just trying to give as much feedback as possible. Because I don't know about you guys, but right now, finding a kayak, getting, like, authentic, honest reviews on them and getting even just good quality pictures on the internet is not that easy. you got to get in the shop. you got to get hands on. And if you can, you got to take it for a spin. And that number one recommendation we can make before we talk about anything is call your local shop, see if they have a demo day. They probably do. And get out there for the demo day. Don't just go buy in kayaks, right? Like that, that's unfortunately what we did in the past. But like, if you get the chance, go out and try these things out. So without further ado, let's start with the one that you spent several days in, Paul, that you, uh, you had no idea. I don't think that you were going to spend several days in this. You just, you weren't going to bring your kayak all the way out uh, to, where is it? Minnesota? Mille Lacs. Yeah. Yep, Minnesota. Yeah, you hit Mille Lacs. So Paul did a trip for MB, went to Mille Lacs, and this first boat we're talking about, I'll let you take the spin on this, obviously, because this is the one you spent the most time in. Uh, but this is the Old Town Sportsman 106 pedal. Now, what was surprising to me, and I'll let you take it away, was the price point on this is $24.99, which is high, like a lot higher than I expected. I thought for sure, I know it's a pedal boat. Pedal boats ain't cheap. But I was like, man, that there's no way. 2500 bucks. Damn. It's okay. cheaper than a lot of other pedal boats, though, these days. It's it's Ish. still cheaper there, than a lot. <laughs> there's a lot yeah. of pedal boats. I was doing, you know, yep. price points on the show. There's a lot of pedal boats that are that are actually cheaper than this. However, <laughs> I got some issues with them. And uh it seems like there's not a ton of thought put it put into them. They have that that generic build to them. Like they're straight up from overseas and by the way i know somebody's gonna say it and we have something to talk about mid-show for this but you can buy kayaks on aliexpress alibaba timu um i wouldn't recommend Temu. it oh show some respect nope i won't it's timu i'm going timu forever team timu anyways tell us about this old town man you you sat in it a whole bunch what'd you think yeah so the old town sportsman is a like wider more stable version of the their predator line that they used to have mm -hmm. um it is very fast it's super fast it is a really smooth pedal drive i like that the drive is all one unit and we saw this this will come up later with the bonafide but there's not like a cap that you have to pull on and off when you pull the motor up it's just like you turn a knob and then you lift up and the whole unit actually comes out and moves away from you which i really really like it also is like when you when you want when you want to pull it up, you don't have to line up the pedal like the you don't have to line up the, the impeller, prop. the yep. prop to actually come through the kayak. It's got a it's got a slanted side so that when you pull it up, it just funnels it vertically so that you could just pull it up. You don't have to worry about it, which I thought was silly on the the bona fide P one. <laughs> We're gonna talk about the bona fide. We'll get P1 there. Soon. We'll get there. But, but real oh, quick, on. not to interrupt. Uh, we we made a mistake. Uh, I said Timu. Okay, proceed. Go ahead. And um, <laughs> what I I uh, I I liked some of the thoughtful features. So I like the flush mount forward facing rod holders that Old Town does. I think that's such a nice throw in. I really like the new track mounting that they have. That it's the heavy duty plastic track mounting. I really like the open rear compartment. The ten footer was nice if you're a pond angler. I really struggled on Malax. I would like to see the twelve footer. I'm sad I didn't get to use it, but I'm sure that it's you know really good. The ten footer was shockingly stable, so I was frog fishing in it, no problem. So I was really surprised how stable it was. Um, and mm -hmm. their consoles are just wonderful, and I love the. They still have the same grooved floor. It's deep enough to really do its job, but it's not so deep where the new canoe was uncomfortable to walk in. Like you could stand mm -hmm. all day on the foot, the footing that they have, like the they got EBA that they have on, on that. I yeah. like it's just a really well thought out boat. What I didn't like about it, I still don't like the handle placement in the front or the back for the old towns. I don't like the way the rudder has to come up all the way over the top. I've never been a fan of that. I just think like there's a handle on it. I just think that that's it's a good idea. It's just not how I would like I would like to execute a boat. It just looks like something else that can fail 
or be forgotten when you're launching. I don't like, <clears throat> you know, some of the, I really hate their, their entry, like their front hatch entry. I've always hated that cap thing. It just, it's flimsy for no reason. It's not waterproof yeah. for no reason. Like they sh they need to redesign it. Um, other than that, huge fan. Like it's, it, it's, I actually, it's crazy to say at 2,500 bucks for a 10 footer, it's still a value. That was my thing. It's 10 foot, right? Like, so I, I understand it. for a pedal, for a pedal boat, it's like a median price range, right? It's nothing crazy. No. The other thing I will say is, and we're going to get into it with bona fides here in just a second. Uh, the old towns always feel and look so purposefully built, like every single nook and cranny has so much thought put into it and nothing else, nothing compares else does. to it. The, nothing Hobie else. does. Hobie's the only one that does. Now you get the whole, <laughs> you, you get the whole experience, every single thing, but you yeah. get the whole experience without the yep. price tag. hundred percent. So, and, and it, it, so I, that's really what you're getting. It's, it's the high old town in my opinion is pro at least at the pedal market is probably one of the highest values out there. You get a That's really awesome. high end, yeah. you get a really high end design. You get a really high, the, the hull is super high end. It's the best tracking boat I've ever been in. It tracks better yeah. than the Hobie does. And it weighs like, like 50 pounds less. So yep. it's like, it tracks is designed very well. Um, but you don't pay 4,600 for it. You pay 2,500 for it. So. The, the big thing for me, for sure, was the prop setup, right? Like the the mid console mm -hmm. inset yep. was so much better than every other one that we've seen or looked at. Like if you look at the bona fides, their little uh, inlay is just a piece of plastic. I mean, it's basic. It's whatever the same material is that Burly Pro uses all the time. It's like that it's a heavy duty plastic, plastic, but it's thin, right? really thin. Yeah, it's super thin. It's held on by bungee straps and you just pop it off and throw it to the side and then you put your prop in and then you put it over the top. It's super annoying. The Old Town has like this actual inset that like feels secure, super sturdy. It was oh, awesome. Oh, it's legit. So it, and it's legit. It blows it's super legit. everything else out of the water. And what Bonafide had is is the standard. Like there are other brands of prop drive, pedal drive, uh, kayaks that use that same kind of flimsy cover. It just covers the hole. Like it's... yeah. I don't know. Yep. wasn't a big fan. Anyway, so uh, I did not get a chance to ride that that kayak. Hello, however, like I'm familiar enough with Old Town, and it has the same build as the autopilot. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about in a second. Uh, just the autopilot that we rode in, I believe, was the 12 footer. Yep, I think it's only one. I think, one. I th I think there's check. two. I I'll feel check. like there's two. Maybe I'm crazy. I feel like this is the show about this, and we should definitely know that. No, I'll but, check. Whatever. I'm doing it right now. So the next one we want to talk about, we're, we're going to burn through here. Uh, it's the autopilot, right? So the Old Town autopilot, we got the the twelve footer is forty three, forty nine MSRP. However, oh, there are two, by the way. Yeah, Sorry, there is a one hundred six, and the yeah, one hundred six comes in the one twenty. So one hundred six, one twenty. We rode the one twenty. It's uh, you know a bit more of a price tag. What's the difference on those two? Is it like five hundred bucks price tag? Yeah, I just had it. <laughs> just have it. So we'll, we'll we'll come back to that, but forty three forty nine for the twelve footer is still less than the base price of a Hobie, the Hobie that we are in right now, the uh, three sixty drive fourteen foot, that's the PA fourteen is forty six hundred, and it might even be up from there now. That's when we got it. So don't quote me on the price, price guy that always yells at me in the comments for not being specifically exactly on price. Uh, it is cheaper with spot lock. That's insane. So. I had never been in one of these. I'd only seen like all my friends that I'm super jealous of riding around in these things. And you've got a little remote control. You got a Minn Kota motor. Like you can just, you can go fairly fast. I thought it, I thought it might go faster, but I probably had too high of an expectation for that. Go ahead. Third, 3,350 for the 106, 4,350 for the two, the extra two feet. But you also get yep. an upgraded console setup with yep. the 120 um, and a couple other bonus features. So it's obviously it's more not space. just the extra two yeah. feet. There's a little more in there too. Yep. And yep. actually so. there's a, there's a 13, six, there's a 13, six autopilot and it That's is 4,850. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So you could have a, a boat the size of ours, 13, six, Almost. 14. Yeah. Uh, and have, oh gosh, dang. and it's still, that's like the price of the Hobie. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that's, you know, that's fun to hear. Uh, 
in other news, <laughs> the, uh, the 120 was a, a sick ride, though. Like I said, I feel like the Old Towns are, are just really purposely built. All of the models are. Uh, and they still make the Predator pedal. Like, if you wanted to get a Predator pedal, you could do that. It's it, such a good boat. Isn't yeah. that crazy? Like, I kind of want... Boat. I was looking the other day, yeah. and I was like, I kind of still want that. <laughs> like it's I'm not- still really happy, though, because yeah. there's some things you got to consider with uh, a motor. One, that was heavy. Yes. Oh, my God. And that That's was the I was smallest getting to. one. It was so heavy. So <laughs> heavy. We walked over. Still- so we did a we did a carry test. We call it the lift miss test. Uh, we know very clever. So we both picked these boats up. We walked them around like 20 yards. We took turns, uh, either, you know, carrying it from the front or the back of the boat. And that boat was insane. Way oh. heavier than ours. Like not, a, it wasn't loaded down. We didn't have tackle in it. It was empty. Right. It was just super heavy. So that was, that's one thing you got to keep in mind, but I mean, it has a pretty big battery in there, obviously. And then you've, you've got, you got your motor. So you do have a motor. That's something to keep in mind. Now it's it's 121 pounds. Yeah, that's empty. That's clean. That's the assembled boat weight with Oof. nothing. So that's Oof. without battery. 121 so that, pounds. Oh. That got it knocks for us like right off the bat. However, everything else that it presented to the table like was awesome. So it kind of it cleaned itself up after that in terms of our ranking system. So we do rank these on Friday and again understand they're not all the same so you know just suspend your display. whatever anyway um so yeah you get your your little remote right it does have a kill switch which is really cool obviously i think that's a very Gotta important thing to have uh and then you know the autopilot got up to with me in it 4.1 miles an hour uh paul was still faster than me in one of the other boats that we're going to talk about in a second but it got up to 4.1 pretty awesome spot lock drops on a dime that's really cool. And the spot lock, if set up right, if used right, uh, somebody mentioned in the chat, really crucial, like awesome. Uh, so I cruised up on a bank looking for a spot, drop that spot lock, drops like an anchor basically, except faster, and held me to that spot. I was able to fish that spot. Really cool boat, very stable. Did you paddle it? No, I didn't paddle it. I had a paddle with me, but Dang. I was like, heck it. I'm certain it paddles poorly well, with everything no, in there. no, because you but, can pull the motor up. Yeah, so, so if you... The, go ahead. You can... The whole... The whole, the whole unit mm-hmm. actually pulls up. So you can pull the prop out of the water. And right, you then you can paddle like that. From that. So you're, you got weight, but you don't have drag. Yeah. So at a 10 foot 6, it should be fairly maneuverable. The 10 um, 6. Really you're just not going to get some... You're just not going to get speed. Yeah. Uh, Rob Harrison, the spot lock mostly holds your orientation. I did notice that it was kind of swiveling me a little bit. I don't know if it's user error. I'm not going to claim that. Did you have the, did you have the rudder down? Yeah. I mean, everything was set up. Like we had Hunter set it up as if we're going fishing, you know? So, I mean, it it had everything, but um, it had a bump, it it had bump board pockets. It had everything. It was, Oh yeah. No, it's it's an awesome, awesome boat it is uh, expensive still in comparison to other kayaks it's cheaper than a hobie so if you're looking at a pro angler 360 and you've got the water suited for you know running a a, a motor all the time then heck yeah like I, I would probably consider that over the hobie doing it again hitting the reset i would button. not why for because our waters batteries are on unli- the batteries are limited i already have the heavy boat it can't do what, what the hobie could do in the river and i'll take the durability of the kick up fins mm-hmm. and the flexibility on control in the river for the kick up fins every single time see in my opinion i'd rather have a river boat specifically for the river but you just added cool three thousand dollars to your no way sorry no way so you want a boat that does both but you want yeah, a pedal i know boat. i need a boat that does both absolutely Yes. Oh man, you, you're going to have uh, the same problem that I've had that I've given up on. It's, I don't see it. I don't see it. Like it's the 360, but if you were to leave the, the 360, what boat is there that can do both that you'd be happy with? I agree. I'm not, that's why oh, okay. I'm in the boat that I'm well, in. This is, There's no this question. Is why yeah. we are also searching because we were hopefully yeah. trying to find something uh, that, that would fit the bill for that. I like the spot lock a lot. I, I, I love the autopilot. I think it's awesome. Uh, I'm not saying I would buy it. I'm saying that if I were on the market looking at the PAs again, it's something I would have considered. It it didn't exist yeah, at the time. Not. They In were fact, it, it, the, yeah launched. 
like right. six months. The funny after. thing about like my kayak journey is I got the PA 180. <laughs> so I had the 180 drive. Three months later, the 360 dropped. So then I was like, oh, cool. So for about a year, I was trying to get rid of my 180 to get a 360, got the 360. And then the autopilot dropped. And I was like, are you freaking serious? So Did the autopilot come out or was it just a sportsman line? Because I don't think the auto no, think the autopilot was, was out yet. The autopilot came out within months of us getting those oh. boats. Yeah. Because <laughs> that was 2020. And still, uh, yeah. it came out right, either right around then. We got those May, something like that, 2020. So, I don't know, six to nine months, somewhere in that range. I'm still At really happy rate, with my decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, no, of course. Uh, so, Cooler Lid AP120, which I'm assuming is like Autopilot 120. <laughs> Big fan. You're not putting that thing in the river. No, I wasn't gonna. I also don't fish the river as much as I really wish I did. Um, right now, we'd be, if we can find a spot, going to Wade. But I'd kind of, I kind of that's why we wanted to try the bona fide RVR 119 because that or the Crescent Sholey, which is not on this list today, only because we haven't tried it out. It's the only reason it's not ignored from this list. It is a sick boat that we want to get in and we want to go out uh, on on the water and enjoy that. So, yeah, we're going to test that out. Um, uh, autopilot. Anything else to say on the autopilot? I, I would say, like, once you knew how to use everything awesome it did take like i hopped into it cold no instruction i was like let's try to figure this out i could not figure out how to get the motor to release and it was super easy once i had hunter come over and like show me all those stuff but so like read the instructions you're good to go it is pretty cool having a remote control boat obviously really cool you're gonna see like some tiktoks instagram reels whatever where we're driving those things around uh, i threw paul in it and then i drove him around the lake that was fun so it has its novelties for sure. Is it a do all boat? No, I don't think it handles every body of water or or the way specifically that we want to fish and the river, especially unless you're on a big, big river, maybe. I don't know. It's a little different. So we don't have that. Mostly skinny water stuff for us. Uh, so let's go to the bona fides. We've got three in a row here. Then we'll wrap up with the new canoe. And then we got some other stuff to talk about. So the bona fide SS 127. First impression, Paul. Hmm. Value. I do think this one's a value. 1749. 1749 bucks is the MSRP. I love so front front to back. Um, I really like the front console. I like the design. They have like these straps that you can slide your paddle under. That can they've got two or three different ways that you can hold your rod holders. I really like they have these little two really short um uh like mounting plates in the front or tracks in the front that that they're just really well designed where they are i love the design of uh the management for your anchor and rudder system i really like the pedal design the way you can move it forward and backward it's super out of the way if you're a fly fisherman you could certainly do this in a boat mm -hmm. um i really like the decking i thought that the stand-up things on the side they had like but they were behind the seat i thought those were not useful that's fine but like i'm never going to use that the seat was very comfortable i the very seat was very comfortable all the three of the bona fides seat. had the yeah. same seat very comfortable well this, not the same no, seat, but, the, but this new version of it is very nice the, yep. the tray underneath is very cool mm -hmm. uh overall it's a great looking boat it's a beautiful boat i like the front handle the back handle was okay but not great but it was a good idea like the design is good i like the flexibility of the rear i was surprised at how much was there for you know, a 12 foot boat. I mean, it, it had enough space. Mm -hmm. it, it had enough space. Um, overall for like a, a paddle cry, I think as a paddle kayak, it's gotta be one of the best values for a paddle kayak. And it, it didn't track super great, but it tracked well enough. Mm -hmm. I think it would be an okay river boat, but not a phenomenal river boat, but you could definitely get away. If you're a paddle guy and you're a pond hopper, like it weighed a lot, but not too much. Um, it gets it got high marks for me for a paddle boat. I liked it a lot. Yeah, it looked it looked like it had a lot of uh, accessory opportunities. Like there's a lot of things that you could do yeah. to that boat. From... That, that wasn't a bad thing. That was like it you, it was an op is an open canvas and yes. you could do whatever you want. And it's built to like be any boat. It can be the full blown out add every accessory or it could be the tiny customization or it can be somewhere in between it, it works for everything and they had all the track on it is alum as the aluminum gear track which is the smaller yep. heavy duty gear track 
by the way. It, it's it's the good stuff. You you know you could do anything from adding uh, rudders to I think that one had anchor wizard spots as well as the not RVR. that one. The other one did. This one did not. The P one twenty seven or the RVR. The RVR. The RVR. For sure the, RVR. the RVR. These two do not had some really well thought out stuff. Oh, uh, but the yeah. So the SS one twenty seven. It's it's a slick paddle boat. There's lots and lots of paddle boats out there. Like you have your options pretty wide open. I'd say that it looks really clean, super comfortable. Nothing I would be mad about having at all. Seventeen forty nine. It's like that median price range. Kind of kind of is the middle, almost. but yeah, it, it's pushing it. But I mean, you'd be really happy with that boat. I think it, right. it falls somewhere in the middle for us of everything that we got to try out. Um, but Jeff, I liked it. You got to stand in it, and you got to stand on the two side pedals. You're six yes. plus. You're uh, so I'm, I'm six two two thirty. Plus. Yeah, and uh, so for all my my big peeps out there that are like wondering how to be stable on these boats and what boats are stable enough for them, the one thing I gotta point out immediately is you gotta look at the the beam on these things, the width. And if it's over 33 inches, you're typically in a more stable boat. Then you got to look at like the build of the boat. The the Hobies are around 36 in what we're in, which is like amongst the widest beams. That new Canoe Unlimited was close to 36. It's like 34, 35. The Old Town is, I think, 38. The, the old 38? I don't think mm-hmm. so. They, I would I'll take it 30, up right now. 35, 36. The Old Towns were oh, the I'll most right stable now. of the boats that we tried out bonafide to me if i were to give it a scale of one to ten on stability it's a six six point five so i mean I, the it's the, good the ss i'd put it a seven a solid seven it stood I, up. I stood that's yeah. insane Old which one all of them they're all all the sports are on the same uh the same frame it's just they have a different center console interesting so yeah, I mean, if it's a 38, like it's, it's pretty stable. It's still, I, I feel like the stability because of the depth inside of the boat that we have in the Hobies is unrivaled. So for me, it's, it's a double really, tune. Yeah. It's really hard. You know, the, the tri-tune hull. So it's, the Hobie has like yes. the two. Yeah. And so does right. Old Town has a very similar one. It's close. That was the closest of the ones that we tried that day was the old town. Mm-hmm. The bona fides below that in terms of stability. Absolutely. It, it's hard to <laughs> it's hard to get into 30, the other boats so after being in the Hobie is, is the 30, honest 36 truth. inch width. But you're talking about a it's a paddle kayak. Now, Correct. That, yeah. Like no, it's, the Hobie it's, is not a pa- that's that's why you get you can go past 36 or 34. Sure. Because you're, you're, you're pedal power most of the time. That's why you're getting that. You can get away yep. with that. You get power from that. You're, every inch that you go wider uh, uh, with a paddle kayak, there's two problems. You're, One, you're, you're pushing a lot more water. Yeah. But two, you actually have to, your, your paddle grip has to go wider, which means you're further or away from your paddle. body. The, the mm-hmm. more power you can get closer to your hip is where you're getting all your power. So the mm-hmm. wider you go, the less power you're getting for every stroke of your paddle. So like, it doesn't make sense. 36 is probably the widest you can go. 34 yeah. is where most of your, your um, is mo- where like your wider paddle kayaks are going to be. Yeah. Asking for a sit on top that you're going to stand up on and walk around on, on a paddle kayak and have the tracking and agility of that, of that kayak. Sure. That's a lot to ask for. I'm not, not suggesting that we'll we'll have that but with the uh the ss 127 it does have like these <laughs> there's an eva deck right next to the seat slightly behind the seat that paul was talking about where you can flip the seat down you can then step up onto the onto this raised platform oh, wow. it was great at, at 6 2 230 it wasn't I didn't feel good. Um, but if you're just standing on it, you're just casting out a spot. I think it's fine. But you got like uh, bear crawl back keeping... onto it. it. It was like a weird add on to me. I'm sure I looked really cool. You guys will see me in the video. I have a video of it. So you guys yep. can watch it happen. You'll see my funky dance. Anyways. Uh, so yeah, SS 127, solid boat, cross board. Fast, I liked it. M- very maneuverable yep. for a, for a 34 inch wide boat. It was mm-hmm. very stable. Uh, cool had features. cool accessories and some really thoughtful features. And I think at 1800 bucks, it's a high middle end, solid, very solid as a, as a paddle kayak. I liked it a lot. Would not buy it 
I would not buy that for a river kayak over the RVR 109 no. though. If it, it so we'll get there. But as there's a do two, it all, as a do it all paddle boat, it does a lot very well. There's only two boats we're really considering for the river. And that's kind of like the the reason we even started this journey in the first place was like these river kayaks started coming out and like that's the juice. We want to get back on the river. That's something we're looking for. This next one was I don't is the like the this is the bona fide P one twenty seven. So this the is pedal a, version all, of the same almost boat. thirteen foot pedal version of the yep. same boat. Um yeah, Jeff, why don't do you want to go first? All right, so the, the MSRP on this is three thousand ninety nine, which also Oof. surprised me. Ow. That is high, right? Like that is where that doesn't matter whether it's on sale. It's on sale right now. The regular price is three thousand one hundred. That's expensive. That's, that's what MSRP means. So like, but there are sales going on. This is why we're kind of talking about it now. Like now is the time if you're going out and you're looking for kayaks. DNR Sports they're doing sales right now. Uh, but the the base price of this is three thousand dollars ninety nine cents, which is insane. Um, this boat surprised me in the way that I was underwhelmed by it. Uh, I this was the one I was like, you know what? If I if I had to get rid of my Hobie and I was looking at all these kayaks, I was like, you know what? It's probably going to be this bona fide pedal, like the bona fide P one twenty seven. Why wouldn't it be? That one makes the most sense. It looks really cool. Tons of uh, accessories, features, all that. A lot of great reviews from a lot of people. Gets a ton of great reviews. I got in it. I pedaled this thing around you guys. I found a lot of problems with it. Well, hold on though. Let's, so let's talk about, let's, I agree, but let's talk about some of the, let's talk about some of the really nice features. Cause there are some really body as the SS 127, right? So you're getting all of those base features, accessories, tracks, seat is extremely comfortable. As, it as paddles I was saying, with all the bona fides. So well. It it paddles oh really well. Oh my god, it paddled freaking amazing. It's fast, very fast. Uh, this is the boat that beat the autopilot at full speed. So it was cru- we were cruising straight line across this lake, and I was like, let's race. Uh, and Paul at Dusted. 80%, 70%, I think. 85, 85, yeah. Yeah, so you know, not max effort. No. Was was beating the tar out of the autopilot, which is freaking fast, dude. It's freaking fast. And prop drives, you know, should be, but like it also takes the build of the boat to do that. And yeah. like this thing, it, it was a ba- it's a banger. It's pretty light, pretty stable, pretty light. Yep. Your your prop drive is heavy, heavy duty. It's one of those like metal drives that's it's still lightweight, like easy to carry around. Comes all the way out. Like it it's it has it's all the light. it has a very large rear. Love the trunk. Um, yep. The underdeck storage it doesn't have the tray, but it's big. Um, I feel like you could add that. Can you not? Is it? I don't think so. There wasn't anything that was necessarily nope. in the way, but it did so. have a molded, it had a, a molded floor. Uh, yeah. to no, the there was a spot for, like your... for tackle. Yep. yep. Um, so keep them in there. It's still got the the rod tip protector situation. You know, as the uh, front and rear mounts for all the extra stuff. Like so, if yep. you want to do a power pole and then any of that sort sort of thing, you certainly can. Um, Anchor so guide it, it had like everything all... that you it had everything you wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, there were some very, and this is our opinion. It, there were some very Just glaring. Opinion, man. There were some very glaring design flaws that. What's the biggest one? So well, okay, the biggest one for me. This was just, it's bi- the biggest because it's so obvious. It was yep. painfully obvious. Yep. I said it in 10 seconds in my video, yep. the rudder control. So That's where you, on the left-hand side, where you turn left and right, it goes under the freaking seat. So if you want to turn right all the way, you have to shove your hand <laughs> under the seat. It was like, yeah. why in the, why in God's name is this a problem? It. it was, it was, yeah. it's a, it's a glaring error. It's also made of a flimsy plastic. It should have been that aluminum or uh, yeah. higher density plastic that was a big miss no the second that, thing real oh, quick on that it, that is something that i've seen most commonly in reviews on prop drive single rudder control pedal kayaks like vast majority out there it's the rudder control that they're unhappy with now you could replace those uh burly pro makes a whole bunch there's tons of aftermarket companies yeah, but, that make them but i don't think you can change three it grand under- it better be rock solid it, I'm, exactly but also like would it still just go under the seat like how are we fixing yeah that it's problem? still stupid <laughs> we'd have and to so, change the orientation of it somehow yeah. and i hate but, to yeah. bash but like this is just stuff that bothered me so i'm <clears> gonna <throat> say it the next thing that was the, the one that th- stood out the most to us after yeah. fishing it the next thing that really bothered me is there's like no room to leave rods on the deck there's no room in that pedal section up at the front 
where your pedals are actually moving, none. Like they they sort of have you leaving rods on the deck, like it's designed that way. Not good. They have it where yeah. like where you're supposed to leave your rods, there's like a holster on either side of your hip attached to the uh attached to the chair. And then mm-hmm. there are like little rod tip protectors that you're supposed to shove into shove shove your rod tips into. I'll tell you right now, those are way too short. I'm not that short. Yep. I'm like a very average item, 5'10", 5'11". And where I was sitting, if I had anything longer than a seven foot rod, I would have broke the rod tips. It, it just, yeah. and then if you try to lay a rod inside the, like under your seat, you were bashing it with your feet, the rod, the the middle section of your rod, you were just wrecking it. So I thought that was a, that to me was like a huge miss. Like that's the stuff on an old town that is like, it's all built in. Now they they have two flush mount rod holders in the in the back behind you, and mm-hmm. they do have this little rod this holster system. But it was a huge miss, just not well thought out. Well, were, um, also, those... also if you this is a big one, if you had mm-hmm. the rod in the rod holster and you had the rod tip in the rod tube, they should have had the rod tip protectors be open at the end because if you scoot your seat up You're while jammed. you have those in there, you would just wreck anything longer than a seven foot rod, and I mean obliterate. I was this close to exploding my BFS setup, just exploding it. So I, I didn't like that. Um, another another yeah. thing is the, the, the pedal drive was very grindy. It made yes. me very nervous. So there was like this, this constant weird, though. grinding system with that, with that drive. Yeah, there, there was a lot of resistance to the pedal. Like anybody with a, a pedal drive, especially if you have a bona fide, can you please comment in chat? Well, there's... The other thing I noticed on it yeah. was when you were pedaling, and, and I think you saw this too, I felt like I had it set up for the distance. Because of the, oh, it re- took me the amount of resistance, it was like this jerky yeah. like pedal where it was like you've got a lot of power in the middle yeah. of the pedal, but then there was like a, a it's weird a amount bike. of like, there was like a weird section where you couldn't get power again until your foot got around. And so it was like this, eh, 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 eh. The old town... Did not have that problem. It was like 80% of the pedal was you were getting yeah. some kind of power. And I feel like it's because of the length of the sh- the um, the, the pedal. Cranks. Yeah. Like the length of the it, pedal actually made it where it was like you were always getting power and that increased your speed. It's it's the 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 crank is like the arm that connects the pedal to mm-hmm. the drive, right? And mm-hmm. again, could you replace that aftermarket? Yeah, you could replace the pedals. You could replace a crank. It's bike parts. The The question Three we grand. would have is like, why should I do that? Why should I have to do that after buying this thing brand new? The yeah. other thing is uh, Elizabeth Z, I think, was brought up that she had stick steering, which I've seen a few people post about. It. I think it's an aftermarket thing that you can do to change your steering. You got that okay. rudder system in the back. There's different things you can do. Again, something else I have to do to make the boat do but what sure. I want it got to, you to do you know I like that's that. good it's not should have um, that's how it should have been yeah john um, gross says that don't they use the same pedal drive as the natives they do it's the, it's the same prop drive i don't um, know i'm not I don't we know. saw it at icast when we checked out the titan protector huh? the i saw a lot, a lot of the 25 pound metal yep where, yeah we're all the same with the same exact remember the uh prop when we were at icast last it was the huh? slayer propel 10 came huh? out which is another boat we I like I thought about looking at. I really just don't want it. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really interested in like a 10 foot barge. Like it's it's a straight up barge. I mean, it's cool. It has tons of cool features. It's just not like what I'm looking for. And maybe it's uh-huh. what you guys are looking for, which is cool. But it's the same prop drive. No freaking way. Where? Everywhere I see these bona fides, I've not seen that. So I'm looking I, at it right now, and that's not what it comes yeah. with. Very interesting. Elizabeth Z, if you could tell us like where you got it, like maybe. Oh, I thought you had a bonus thing. <laughs> the um, Zulu, the Zulu is sweet. That is going on my my next look list. Like the, the next time we go through and we we break down, I gotta find find out who carries Kaku around here. I know a few people do. Uh, they're cool boats, very cool boats. The Zulu is insane. I have I another. Really want to dig into it. I have another go gripe. Ahead. So, yep. the way the drive comes out of the boat, um. Love it. You have to like look. Okay, first of all, there's like a cover, and there's three elastic, two or three elastic things. Oh, yeah, four elastic. Yes. Points. So like when you are when you're like jetting to go like land your boat, right? Yep. You're going as fast, kind of as fast as you can, or pretty fast. You're going to moderate speed, 
like as you're going to land your boat at a at a at a launch or a dock or whatever because eventually you're gonna have to pull up your rudder so you have to pull also the rudder pull is way too far forward it was like really hard to like you had to like pull it forward pull it up and then go forward again it was not cool i did not like the cleat thing it was in a bad spot it should be way further back so that it's right at your hip not way in front of you because you get no leverage but anyways yeah. so you're going to kind of a good clip you're going like a medium speed then you have to do that so you get the rudder up so you don't grind that when you're landing now you can't steer though now yeah. you're just like doing whatever now you can paddle and do all this ahead of time if you have a paddle but anyways if you have a giant boat what... you probably don't have the paddle but I then you have to undo the four bungees <laughs> that are right in going. front of the console. You have to pull the plastic thing off, put it under your seat or somewhere. <laughs> then you have to pull the drive up, but you can't just pull the drive up. You have to look down through the drive, look at the propeller or the prop, and you have to get it to facing vertical, which is really shockingly tricky. Then you have to, then you can pull it up. Then you're landing. It was so cumbersome for absolutely no reason at all. There was no reason for it to be as cumbersome as it was at all. I did not like that. <laughs> Sometimes you get going on a rant and like you have so much momentum that we all just have to sit back. And I don't like care. Finish your rant. What? Like, why what did they do that? Is, why would you do that? I don't know. I'm not saying it's a good design at all. I don't like it. However, I think that the way that we port our boats is different. Than I now, do. I now do it all ahead head and paddle. Yep, the, the 360 has a single switch. You basically just pull this little red tab, pull your drive out. So we, we'll hit like top speed and just ram into shore. <laughs> and like yeah. durable hull, we got a cover on the bow, like we're good. Uh, we, you get that that bumper bro from Burley Pro is like awesome. Or you use like gator tape or whatever. You just cover the keel and you can just ram into shore. So that's how we do it. We just rip the prop out and we land and we're good. We can do that very quickly. So switching to the P127 setup, completely flipped that on its head, right? Like it was totally different. Uh, so we weren't able to do that. And yes, it was very cumbersome to take that drive out and then like lay the prop sideways, set it up, and then you got to paddle into shore. It sounds annoying. So yeah, the, you know what? It's it's an interesting boat. It didn't, it, it under it was underwhelming. Like I expected a lot more. I Maybe I had too high expectations it, going into it. I that was probably high. part of it. The turning radius was not phenomenal. Either. It was awful. It was awful. I thought it was I, fine. I wasn't ready for that. So it was prop fine. drives. It was not great. Yeah, you and I talked about that. Prop drives and you and the uh, the Sportsman 106. Yeah. yeah. The radius, the turn radius is just so much wider, obviously, than you expect from like a 180 drive from the Hobie or even the 360. Yeah. Of course, the 360. And then obviously like the autopilot, right? So, I mean, you're not... You just got to be used to turning wide. That's pretty much it. You do have instant front and re reverse. That's what pretty much anybody with a prop drive. That is was like, nice. Hey, awesome. Instant forward reverse, which is cool. Yep. And you can go fast. It's much faster than so a fin fast. drive. This, so there, this was the fastest of anything we tested. For sure. Not close. Not close. There were lots of pros. Unfortunately, there, there, there's too many cons. For but this me. is the dip. Like, yeah. I think at the end of the day, you're looking at a $3,000 boat. And I'm looking at a $2,500 boat with the Old Town. Even I would sacrifice the two feet. Even, I would too. I would too. Because it's yep. the rest of the design features on the Old Town Phenomenal. are so much more refined and thought out mm -hmm. and durable. Yeah. And, yeah. and it was just a higher, much higher quality, well planned out boat. I think like if you put, if you gave that bona fide another five years, yep. there's, so, there's so much there. Like there, there are some things that they could easily fix that they need to fix to make it where if it was like a $3,200 boat and they fixed all that stuff, I would be absolutely in. Like I like if you could take the the front port of the bone, the, the front hatch of the Bonafide, put that in an old town. If yep. you could take the trim down <laughs> nature, like how trim the deck is slim and trim, but widen it by like three inches probably. Yep. Um and then fix the drive issues, I would yep. pay another 300 bucks. Easy. I'd go to 3,500 yep. and I would go get that boat because it's fast. Um, and that would fix a lot of the major flaws for me. So I don't yep. know though. 
You know, and, and I, I realized too, for Paul and I, at least, like maybe we're looking for that, like perfect uh, purple unicorn boat. Yeah. Like, and, you know, and it, it may not exist and we're totally okay with that. The fun part of this is we get to explore and try all these other ones. And then all we're doing is conveying and sharing our experience with you. So let, let's, let's get to these last two boats yeah. because we, we got to get into this yep. uh, so yep. we can, we can roll on and yeah. uh, we do have something fun to talk about. bona fide redemption. Second. The bona fide redemption out of the SS-127, the P-127, we weren't thrilled. The RVR-119 is that boat. Like, it is a legit vessel. Now, I don't, I'm i not here to compare it to the Crescent Sholey, which is what everybody really wants to do and we want to do. We will do uh, because we do have a spot where we can go check out the Crescent Sholey, hopefully put it on the water, try that out this summer. So we will follow up with feedback on that. However, pretending the Crescent Sholey doesn't exist, the RVR-119... And it does come in a 117, 119. The 119 is oh. awesome. So uh, it was so light, as hopefully you would expect. Like for a paddle boat of that size, 11.9, like we're able to throw that thing around. Uh, we did the carry test, super easy. We ran with it and we put it overhead and we just carried it overhead for a little bit. That was a blast. So super light, uh, super maneuverable. I was in it. So it's an 11.9, super light boat. I got in that thing paddled around i did stand on it so i will tell you as with the ss127 not as stable not that stable um standing on that as a bigger person uh i'd be cautious about right you got to have really good balance it's again it falls in that six 6.5 out of 10 for me stability wise however if i'm on the river i'm not doing that that much um bill i'm, I'm staying in i'm sitting down like i'm fine with that it's agility fast. is what sold me it was fast it the tracks really so well it's a 35 inch wide boat so this boat is actually wider Still? than the p127 which so is crazy but it, it was on purpose for the river river right yep um but you know what i there's a couple of other things that i really liked about it like the massive upgrades as far as uh like uh, the ability to have an anchor system it's built for an anchor wizard system it actually has ports in the front and the rear to to manage your anchor line hidden inside the, it's so sick it has the rod holding capacity to put rods anywhere on deck no problem the front console i thought is well designed very open but also has access for all the electronics if you really wanted to have them uh it has the 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 custom system in the back that's pretty flexible not as flexible as the other ones but it does leave a lot of deck mount tracking which i really liked in the rear um this is a lightweight fast much more refined design boat the seat i thought was not as nice as the as ss-127 the SS. yes. that made me a little pissed it i was like a, you I think, got I, it. I think it's just a lighter weight i know cheaper seat. it is what it is it's, it's not still, as nice. It's still comfortable, but it is not close. No. It's not close. I'm not no, going to pretend it is a. Yeah, but it's it, fine. But it's, it's not fine. as good. You're going to want to get like probably a cushion or something to ramp that seat up. Whatever. It's a, it's a cheap accessory. The seat was like one of the downfalls. The rigging for the anchor wizard on there yeah. was awesome. So unreal. Next level. Loved it. So Front awesome. rear, hidden. It could do a dual system. Yep. I love that it has the. The bumper board. board. That's such yep. a nice thing for a riverboat that not a lot of riverboats have because people don't really consider that part of the riverboat fishing culture. So I was like, yep. it had it all. I, I was very impressed. This, if it weren't for the RVR, I would be bonafide like, would have been like I would have been out on bona fide. So this was a huge save. It's not <laughs> yeah. that they don't have some good stuff, but I, I would yep. be like, you know what? It's not for me. This made me be like, you know what? When they do a release later, maybe an upgrade on the the P127. I'll go check it out like a hundred percent and I'll, and I'll come in with like, let's, let's see what we've got. Cause like you guys are cooking with fire here. Like, let's see it. The the RVR blew my mind where the P127 let me down. That that's yeah. how I felt about that trip. So uh, at 1649, that's the MSRP. Again, you can find all these things on sale. I'm sure I'm not going to quote any sales. Um, but at 1649, like that's, that's solid. That is, a good investment for a riverboat. If you guys love fishing rivers like we do, even in skinny water, you're going to be fine. It's a high plane on that thing. Uh, even at my weight, like I could well, rock some. Yeah, JT yep. called us out. They are Ramps designed. They're they're designed to work with Torquedo. They yep. actually have a fully loaded version where you can get it installed. 
and it's like all built in. They have a place for the the yep. speed control, and they have a special mount in the back that still allows you to use the anchor if you want. So it's pretty dope. It's really cool. It is awesome. Love that boat. It it blew me away. So you know, other than the the autopilot having spot lock, which by the way, somebody brought it up. I apologize if I I missed your name uh, in chat, but you're the person for calling this out. The 106 is not an auto pilot as in it doesn't have spot lock like so it is an mk Minn Kota, so it does still have like your speed variations control all that stuff but it's not still spot lock. you got a motor in the mid council of the boat awesome no spot lock so that's that's like one of the trade-offs for that thousand bucks that you're paying for um so just great call out in chat thank you so much for that just missed it um yeah so i mean all great boats then we wound up with the the new canoe unlimited and the new canoe was one that really every time i mention new canoe what would you say paul i it's they are i it's this is hard to say they're nice they do look nice they are super flexible i like the hunting paint jobs but they are not refined they are they when you see the best ones i find them i find them to be like there's there's not a way to get a really polished you know, completely yeah. designed one. And that's always put me off. Yeah. So uh, anytime I would bring up new canoe, we have a, a buddy who guides the flat river, Ted, who's been on the show before and uh, has given away multiple smallmouth trips that are awesome. So shout outs to Ted flat river outfitters. Uh, he was rocking a new canoe before I knew what they were. And uh, he has the Flint, I think is the main one that he has. He might have guy. multiple now. But yeah. The Flint's the little guy, but the unlimited I believe oh my gosh what, <laughs> what did you say Chaz has two cup holders thank goodness because uh the bona fides did not have cup holders and i i gotta tell oh, you yeah guys, what the, the fart was that the lack of cup holders what the fart was that that was a that instantly threw me off <laughs> it did oh lord no no yeah, that's so, just, that that oh anyways the unlimited is it's 12 foot six it has yeah the widest beam 41 inches 41 inches dude <laughs> and it's not light but it's not heavy it's 80 pounds empty like no, it's I, reasonable it's for for a 13 foot boat i think the the weight capacity is 600 pounds our pa is 650 so this was easily the most stable although like the old town's obviously extremely well, stable this no. thing you did a crushes you danced on bro i did it i did a christine fisher i walked all the way up to the very front um yeah it wasn't like living my best life but like it was Mm -hmm. very possible and i could have casted um you know i was so the the idea the idea behind this boat is that it's stripped it has Mm -hmm. only the basics in it for when you make your purchase at 1800 so it's not coming with the extras there's no rod storage like all the stuff like there is but it's not it's not the same it's got a ton of track, but most of that track, almost all of it, is dedicated for moving the seats. A 360 swivel, very basic, comfortable enough, but basic seat that can lay yep. completely flat. Um, and it's a long, very wide open boat like Jeff was talking about. So the idea here is you can get, yeah, there's no enclosed storage. It's totally open. So the idea here is that you're getting a boat that can hold two anglers very comfortably, and you definitely can, and you can put a motor on this. This is going to be a duck hunting boat. This is going to be a two-person John boat, basically. Uh, The paddling and maneuverability is what really threw me off. I was like, whoa, this is so good. Like It was very maneuverable for how big it was and how high you were above the water. It was incredibly stable. and I do, I think at 1800, it's a, especially if you're planning on like taking a young kid or, you know, having a fishing buddy in the boat or you're a duck hunter, or you're looking to have like a whole deer that you're going to be taking down the river with you or something like this is a, the, by far the most flexible platform for doing a lot of really cool stuff. in. and if you put a motor on this, it's a huge win. This is a, this has winter written all over it. If you get a nice big electric motor on it. So I'm you know, I liked all of those things. It does have some negatives that we can go through, but it had a a lot of positives. And I was, I was, my, my impressions of it 180 from what I thought it was going to be once I started paddling it. Like 180, like you in the seat? <laughs> As you turned around. 360 in the seat, bro. Oh, it doesn't have that 360 drive. It's got that 360 seat, bro. <laughs> uh, very wide though. So how is the paddling? Wonderful. 
It was outstanding. Yeah. I, I was so surprised how and you had a standard paddle. Like you, you could yep, get a lot of extra long. Yeah, no, easier. no, this was a really nice, really easy paddle. Mm-hmm. Um, especially again for how wide it was. I, I just did not see it coming. Um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be very comfortable in like any kind of rapids. I wouldn't want this one on the river unless it was a big wide river. I, yeah. I'd be very nervous. You're just very high up and um all of your crap is going overboard like it's 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 not gonna hold a lot of your stuff but like two people though at uh, this, this track thing bungees. has a lot to offer no, i mean it has a lot to offer it really does it, it was surprising uh that one again was uh i don't know kind of the dark horse of the bunch like it, it blew us away in that we had zero expectations for it we're like this is gonna be bad this is not gonna be good uh, we gave it a shot and it surprised us. So yeah, I mean, new canoe, I think they make some good stuff. One thing you did point out too, was like the, uh, the depth of the deck channels might be because of like the angles and whatnot, a little bit deeper to the point where it's almost uncomfortable to walk on. It was uncomfortable to stand on. That's their tarp and decking. I didn't love that all yeah. day fishing. I'd get pretty PO'd. So, you know, there's obviously there's some things to think about. Uh, and it, with this one, price point was seventeen ninety nine, So it's right at that SS-127 price point. Yeah. What would you pick between the two? I'm just going to throw you on the spot. SS-127 or New Canoe Unlimited? If it was just me as a kayak angler. Just you alone, as a kayak angler. Alone. Bonafide. Any bonafide. other situation. Any other situation. And the seat. Unlimited. I, it's yeah. just, man, and, and honestly, if I could only have one boat, like you told me for the rest of my life, I could only have one, I'd buy this one. The reason is I could take you my could son, I could take my yeah. wife out. You and I could go out on this. I could put the motor on it. I feel Throw another comfortable. Seat. Yep. There's so many other things that you could do with this boat. You'd have to deal with a lot of strip down. Like you're not, you're just not yep. going to get it done. But like if you're, if I wanted to go duck hunting, I have, it's un, it is unlimited. It's great. So yeah, if you could only have one boat forever, it, it would be this one, I think. But yeah. you're giving up a lot. And so, yeah, between all the paddles, it was just, it re- it's just really surprised me a lot. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a Blake canvas. And yeah. that's why people really love it. I mean, should. yes, John, 100%. Uh, that gives you a lot of opportunity. And if you have the vision for it and the creativity and the uh, wallet, then you can do anything you want with this. This, would, post, this would be, sure. this would be like my fifth boat. Like if I had a if I had a riverboat, if I had like my I'm gonna have one that paddle vessel, do. then yeah. you and I could be going yep. out on this together. I would sell the canoe, I would get this, I'd put a motor on it, and I would be happy yep. as a clam. Like we would have I could see you and I being on there and having fun for like a decade and just being like, Yeah, yeah, we're going out on the local pond and we're just gonna knock them dead, or we're gonna go camping, we're only taking one boat, we're gonna deal with it. Like I could yep. th- this would be awesome. And maybe one day that happens, right? Like I never knew that was even on the radar as like an yeah. option, but once we Saw that we kind of like started envisioning the uh, the opportunities that that boat presents. Really cool boat. Really, really like that a lot. Uh, bro, bro said fifth boat <laughs> mission discover. Yeah, I did. You got your pinky out while you're drinking that. I meant between the between the two of us. So my third, it, we'll it go with that. lifetime. You guys, not like necessarily no. having five in the garage. Well, like next like, week, I'd probably grab three one. in storage. Oh, whatever <laughs> no yeah, that's not oh that's the, not the one guys there was there were there was one glaring con it was so it we said it, i mean the rear handle while oh, kind of the smart handles. one yeah. it meant if you were carrying the rear handle and you had like you were like waddling around the rear of the boat to like not bash your lowers and also front, it was a metal it was a steel hand like an aluminum handle it was two trillion got, degrees like yeah, oh my hot. god Why it wasn't even a hot it? day the day was 70 degrees, but the sun was out. So that thing just heated up. So, you know, RIP, if you don't have gloves and you got an unlimited on a 90 degree. I mean, you could stick your hand in the water. You'd be fine. But like, bro, if you're unloading that from the car, you'll be like, you'll be like uh, the dude from Home Alone when he grabs the heated door handle and he and brands screaming. himself with the with the, the yeah. logo. Because like, you will sear the skin off your hand. <laughs> So anyways, that's, those are our thoughts on those boats. You know, I, I kind of had like a vision for how this might go today and we ended up just hammering through them. Um, if you guys were looking at some of these kayaks, hopefully this was helpful for you. Like maybe it's something that you can consider. Again, these are just our opinions. We know what we're looking for and you know what you're looking for. Uh, but look at the Friday video if you want to just see how this goes down. Then we power rank all those things. Again, just based on the five that we had on our hands that day. The 106 Sportsman's not in that mix. 
that was from a previous trip that Paul did. I just threw it in the mix today because we had an experience with it. Uh, best thing we can recommend, Gramps called out in chat as well. If you guys get the chance, or you can just make it happen, call up a local shop. Hey, do you guys do demo days? I promise you, most of them do. They have a pond nearby or a lake that they like to use. In this case, DNR had a lake about a mile and a half, two miles down the road that they just load up a, a trailer with whatever kayaks you want to try out. They take you down there and it's awesome. I mean, great customer service. So call around, um, support locally whenever you guys can. That is just something I want to call out for that. Now, from here, we're already, you know, an hour into our show. So we got to kick into high gear here and get into the end of this thing. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this to you, Paul. Do you want to go ahead and do the uh, chitty chat, slow rolling thunder with the, uh, you know, the mid roll thing that I had planned? Or do you want to just go to the regular slow rolling thunder? Regular, we'll okay. save it. We'll okay. save it. Oh, yeah. I, I will call this out. So we had uh, two of our awesome members shouting out some stuff in chat. So to Army Outdoors 88N, been a member with us and the Snorlax crew for 26 months. My dude uh, says, what's up, y'all? From the lake. No catches yet. Lake is fishing weird. Well, hey, man, I'm going to send you all the best luck I possibly can. Like, good vibes, good vibes. Go catch some fish. Uh, I hope that you knock them dead, man. And then uh, DeBurley AAA Hype Man, Big Lever Gang Making Moves. <laughs> Your name. <laughs> Every time, man. Is there uh, a character limit? We're testing it if there is. Apparently not, because that's like 4,000 characters. But anyway, it's been a member with us 26 months on the Snorlax crew as well. One of the OGs. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, says, word nerds. I like that phrase. I'm going to have to pocket that phrase. Yeah, that's good. That. Word nerds. Uh, ever thought about the Bass Raider or Pond Jumper style boats over a kayak? Oh, and I'm actually here, not working. Yay me. Hey, man, appreciate you, you showing up for that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say I don't understand. I'm going to feign my naivete. naivete. What are you talking about? I have no I would idea. Say, Paul, I would say, I would say no, only because if I were going to go that route, I would just go for a bass boat. Like, yeah. The middle, I mean, I feel like I'm already in the middle, like with You're the size about just of the boat that I have and everything. Yeah, kind of. Oh, okay. and I and I would, Your I would just rather, yeah. I would rather just go with, I would just go all in on a bass boat personally, especially because the two of us Fair could enough. be on it full time. So yes and no, it's not a bad idea. It's sweet, but it's really, yeah. I'm really more into like I would just go, I'd spend the money on a bass boat personally. You mean you wouldn't get fifty characters? That. He says that's your limit. Fifty characters. <laughs> you wouldn't um, get. A so little for some, roundabout that has the motor on it and it's just a little round boat and just like <laughs> yeah, so you're talking about. yeah come on you would so uh, for so for slow rolling thunder yep. first of all if you guys aren't already we everyone in chat is already chatting so if you'd like to be entered for our 25 dollar gift card uh from monster bass that's good for anything except for a subscription and yes we do recommend go try out one of those rods we think you'll be very impressed i've been using them a ton i put some work into mine this weekend um but anyways, if you'd like to chance to win that, just chat something, anything starting now, starting five minutes ago, just start chitty chatting anything and you're entered to win. And then we're going to give some people time to get their chats in while we answer yep. this question. But instead of a question, I'm going to quickly walk through the models that we would like to try out. We're going to check some of these off the list in the coming months. But these are some things that we're interested in trying. Uh, these kayaks. are our list. So, <laughs> yes. um, so in addition to the ones we got to see. So one is the Crescent Sholey. That's been on my list for 100%. a while. You guys have heard me say that. Very excited to, to try that one out. Uh, the Perception Pescator is a big one for me. It gets a lot mm -hmm. of high marks. I feel like it's going to fall somewhere in the P127. Like, it's going to yeah. disappoint me. That's I my... Think so. I it's think I don't know. Me. <laughs> Jackson Kusa X is definitely one I want to get into. I also think yes. I'll be disappointed, but we'll see. Vibe Shearwater, I think, will compete with a lot of the other paddle kayaks out there, but I, I would really like it. to get inside one and put some hours into it. it. Is, is that the one that's convertible? Because they did just drop one that you can convert. Like it's I don't got know. an easy drop in motor. Not the original. You can drop in a pedal. I like that um, if it does. I think it's the Shearwater. I think it's the new one. But yeah. Cool. The Native ghost of media. Yep. The ghost would be the other one. Native Slayer is a is a huge one. Potentially the Titan, but the Slayer is where I would want to see myself trying one. It's like there the are some others, around, yeah. and I would say like they're more in the like cheaper or like off the beaten path kind of area. So Lifetime Pelican, BKC, Wilderness Systems, they all have like their high end models. I'd really like to get in some of them because high end is still cheaper than the eighteen hundred we've been talking about. Is sort of the mid range for yep. these higher end paddle kayaks. So I'd really like to get into some of those. 
Um, but that's just what on what's on our list for now. Obviously, none of this is easy because you have to find a dealer that's willing to let you use the boats. Not and that easy. We, them. And carries yeah. them and has them in stock, et cetera, et cetera. So we're we're gonna get to some of these. Probably not all. Well, I know we're not gonna get to all of them, but these are oh. some some that we'd like to try in the future. So um anyways, that's that's what I want to get to. So uh Chuck. We're at 115 uh, in the chat. If you want to get a couple more people on here, we said, should we go back to 125? Should we lower it to 125 for today? Oh, I think we should. 125. You guys can get 10 more of your friends in here. Uh, your we'll do another one. We got a couple slow rolling thunder questions still, so we'll get there. Uh, but we got through that. So, Charles, are we going to, can you roll the $25 gift card winner for us? And then I'll play victory music. Michael M. Michael M., you have one. You better be here. <laughs> so yeah, you better be here for that. He said, it's me. Sweet. Uh, Michael M., follow the instructions on screen. If you'd be sweet. so kind, and we'll get you that $25 gift card. Congratulations. We're going to give you guys a chance to get your buds on here. We need 10 of your best friends uh, or your close relatives or whoever to get let, on here. Let, let's That's give, we we'll give you guys a minute to bump those views up. We get those views up. You guys know how it is. We got the secret extra schmiv away. So the extra schmiv away will drop. It will be a random accoutrement assortment of said tackle that will be coming from one of our offices. Uh, it's Paul's turn for sure. So we will throw some stuff together and we'll hook you guys up. So stay in chat. Invite your friends if they haven't come in yet, uh, and we'll do that. So while we give you a minute to do that, let's get into the actual slow rolling thunder yes. questions. Here we go. Question number one. This one's fun. What concert? This is my wife's going to go see Taylor Swift, right? Are you and going? No, no. What? Um, I why? would go. I would go you because it's like go. a billion dollars. But she's going with like her sisters is flying a, in from like this Switzerland. Is why, so this is why go I would ahead. not even consider going to concerts nowadays because even if they're here. They're often very expensive. Oh, so yeah, this uh, is like a million dollars as far in in, in terms of like for a concert. It's in Switzerland that she's going. No, she's flying. Her sister's flying in from Switzerland to in see the show, and like is going to be your flight. Anyways, it's all fake, so I'm not going. Yeah. Haley's going. So cool. my question, though, this leads to my question, which is, mm -hmm. what concert would you go pay to see? Because I'm not a concert person. Me I, I totally respect that people are, but I'm just not. So there's mm -hmm. the the number of concerts that I would be willing to pay to go see is like very low. And I've been yeah. proven wrong. Like I saw Garth Brooks. I was not excited about it. I love country like Garth Brooks was not excited to go. I saw the world tour. It, it was incredible. It was so good. It was so good. I saw Kenny Chesney outdoors. It was fine. Yeah. I don't know if I would go again. I do. I mean, I love country music, but like, you know, Garth, um, Garth I've been to, I'm, I've been to every metal concert just because of my brother. So I've seen like yeah. a ton of them. I've been to the warp, like warp tour, like a whole bunch of different ones, but it, they've always left me like, yeah, that was cool, but like, I don't really know. So the list is very limited for me. So I, I've been to a number of concerts, which is partly why I'm not a concert guy anymore, because just the, oh my God, it takes so much to just go to the concert and then to have the energy to get through the concert. Now that and everyone's like drinking, five. like, and I don't know, it's just not everybody's getting hammered, but like, I also paid for these tickets. So I want to like, remember the party. Show. So there's, you a want a party? there's a median there's a median party line that i have at concerts yeah. where i can yeah. like drink enough and still survive enjoy, have a remember, memory yeah, at least drive home, home sure. you know all that stuff so the it, drive home is horrible it it's is, horrible like, like, if, like, if you can if you're in a big city and you yep. can stay at a hotel like that's kind of dope oh my gosh so so first of all we're sounding very mid to late 30s I oh, but I'm ready. I have an answer. Like I know what I, mine is. I do. I do too. Right. The funny thing I was calling out about uh, the T Swift, the Swifties, is I yeah. saw a TikTok this morning. Some dude went with his wife, which is why I got excited when you said she was going to Taylor Swift. I was hoping you were going. I would. Go. I would go. This Taylor guy. Swift this is guy. Scared. I know. This guy went. He said it was an absolute blast. Like blew his mind. Right. And I was like, that's that's awesome. I love. I that. believe security that. There. So. That said, I've been to Warp Tour. I've been to uh, back in the day. It's it's this is funny. It's changed. So near Detroit, Michigan, we had this uh, radio station. It's called eighty nine X. It's now a country yeah. station. So it used it used to be like a hard rock metal station. So I went way back in the day. They had a birthday bash, and some forty one played, and I saw them there. And some forty one just disbanded. So that's crazy. Yep. Um, I love the music scene. I enjoy music very much. I do not enjoy going to concerts, mostly oh. because that many people in a spot gives me too much anxiety and I yeah. hate it. 
Um, I'm, on, it's, I'm on sensory overload. Dude, I crash so hard. So I used to go to those things. I have no interest in going to a festival anymore. Like zero, none, period, the end. Would I go to one like singular act? Yes, absolutely. Well, my wife and I went to see Fleetwood Mac when they were in Grand Ooh. Rapids the other year. <laughs> that was top of the list. Garth Brooks, top of the list. Right now, this is purely nostalgia. The only one I would go pay for is Blink-182 because they just it. reformed with Tom DeLonge. Yeah. And that was like my favorite band as a kid. Listen to them nonstop, every album, all yeah. their secret tracks. Yeah. Huge, huge fan. Chaz? I like it. Shut it. <laughs> I, that's a good answer. I respect that. Yeah. So that, that, that's seen, my answer. There you go. I've seen, so I used to work at um, The Odd uh when i was at michigan state so yep. i've seen every uh, kind of show, like every kind of show constantly they're they're good but like on the honestly the one show that i really wish that i had gone to and then i would still pay to go to would be alkaline trio Ooh, like yeah. hun- like they have unlimited hits and every song yep. is a banger so underrated and you know it'd be a bunch of old dads wearing bands like it that show sure. would absolutely slap everyone would be willing to help you in a you know help you out should you fall in the pit like everyone would be like there with a gummy it would be just like a in wonderful experience very vibe. chill to like vibe. yeah just to like let's <laughs> let's enjoy the night everyone get home safe yeah. and yeah. let's not let's don't be too tired in the park don't okay? murder each like, other <laughs> I, you, remember, yeah. you feel me like i dude I, that it. would be a sh- I would do I would that. Love and that. Alkaline Trio is just, they, everything about them just slaps, dude. It, like, it was funny you mentioned Michigan State, too. I, at one of those event centers, I think it was the Warden, I went to see mm-hmm. Motion City, Motion City there. soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah. You were probably working. Were you yeah. working it or you were yeah. what? 100%. Yeah, yeah. I was there when, like, all five of the super bands came. Like, it was like uh, Taking Back Sunday, yes. Yellow Card. Like, I was at yeah. that whole, I went to that one. I saw every, like, all of them. I, I went, I worked, like, every show, all the rap concerts I worked. Like, yep. I mean, I saw like who's the dude that did like I love college. Like I was there for that. He, that's remember when they came to to my yeah when Ash Roth they came to our that's, house. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Good time. Killer. Love it. All right. Cool. That was a fun. What's question. the count? Yeah. What's the count? You Still at one fifteen. You guys have done nothing. Last question. You guys get one minute. This one's gonna be so fast. No, we do love you guys, but you're not doing anything. Here we go. Don't worry. We'll would stack. You, we'll stack the next one. I always say that <laughs> today with the what's what's on the market today. Would you purchase an electric vehicle? Uh, uh with what's on the market right now, there's yeah. there's so many. There's quite there, a few. there are so many. I just I don't know. I guess you've I've got never trucks. Even you've got SUVs. It. You've got cars. You've got they're getting bicycles. They're, they're getting so much better. Way better. You, you just threw bikes in there. <laughs> just. J, J, Gramps goes, yes, the Autopilot 120. <laughs> <laughs> My electric vehicle well played. on the water. Well played. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. No, um, fair enough. Truck, I don't know. They're getting way better, though. Way Maverick better. is, it's got like a 300-ish. That's basically a full tank of gas for most trucks. They're getting awesome. So I'm I'm close on the truck. Uh, a bike, for sure. If you guys haven't ridden oh, yeah. an e-bike. Yeah. I wouldn't want to pay for it. E-bikes are. I wouldn't want to pay for an electric yes. bike. They they do get expensive. You can get them for like 2K to 6K, but like, cool. yeah, they're they're pretty rad. They go real fast too. Um, yeah, I don't... I would. I would. And there, so the Ram is launching theirs at the end of you're next dropping year. dropping one? Okay. I'm already buying so Ford, one. Ford has... So didn't comes, Chevy just drop one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chevy's yeah. got one? Yep. Yeah, I mean, I why not? Like, if, if money wasn't an option... Well, you get a huge rebate. So sure. mich- you get a giant rebate mm-hmm. um, and then they price them accordingly. So they're like five grand higher than like a gas new truck, but you get a rebate that's bigger than that. So it's actually a little bit cheaper. Sure. Um, so the the new Ram that comes out is going to have an upgraded battery pack that gives you 500 miles to the gallon estimate or a 500 mile tank estimated charge. Yeah, it can charge 100, 100 miles worth of charge in 10 minutes, which is freaking crazy. Um, and the one thing that I think that people, the one thing I think that people forget is every time you're leaving, if you're charging at home, you're, you're leaving with a full tank of gas. Like the number of times that you have to go on like a cross country trip is I feel like really low. So like not buying a vehicle for something you do like once a year or twice a year for most people, I feel like is like a little disingenuous. Like I feel like we're really overplaying the benefit of gas mileage. Like 
Oh, yeah, opinion. no, for sure. I mean, if we if we just had more widespread spread like charging stations, like it wouldn't be. So the DNR is putting them in all over at campsites awesome. and stuff. They're they're already in like yeah. a whole bunch of them. Like all the big ones, they already have a bunch of them, and they're That's dual bad. sided. So like every yeah. station actually charges two cars. And they're, yeah. I love, dude, I think that's absolutely genius. No, that's cool. I mean, sure. Yeah, for sure. 121, you got 121 four people. Guys... 124, dude, get one person on. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> should we hit, should we hit my mid show or skip it? <laughs> like we could right, give well, them one more minute. Oh God, we'll give you one more chance. Oh my Lord. Get one person on. Come on. Okay. Okay. This, this end show segment is brought to you by... Yo, you guys, we made several videos about Timu, Temu, or whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, and man, oh man, does Timu have some fans out there? And they were mad. Uh, they, oh, God. I'm not even going to give them that much of a platform of time. If you guys get like one or two more viewers, we'll do this schmib away for you guys. So I figured I'd give you a chance here. I'm giving you one last chance. Here's John the deal. Gross goes, hit up, or John Ghost, 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 Ghost. Ghost. Hit Gosh. up your team who rep to join. <laughs> <laughs> so I all right. So we, we made we made one twenty six. So it was a great choice. Roll it. Yeah, just roll it. Call out the winner real quick, and then I'll tell you what the Timu fanboys said. <laughs> Robert Jones. Robert Jones, you you're have... getting my last monster bass bag. I'm going to absolutely load it up. All right, Paul is loading up what you have just won, Robert. I saw you just chat. So chat again. Tell us you're still alive. And in that last five seconds, you didn't disappear from the earth. Uh, and then we will have you follow the instructions on screen. We'll ship you out the, the prize. So while while Robert's doing that, Chaz is watching for him. Uh, we did this Timu videos, right? And like the intention was never to instantly i guess like like bash it we were literally like okay super cheap lures our expectations are extremely low because they're cheap chinese lures that are knockoffs like they're all knockoffs so i, I to be honest if i came off like mad in the video which this guy said my attitude sucks in the comments <laughs> i was laughing at that uh yeah i Basically, everybody got mad saying I didn't give the baits a chance, that I fished them on a cold day, and topwaters can't work on cold days, even though they can. It wasn't even cold. Water tamps were like lower end, 55 to 60 degrees. Give me a break. I, I have the water I have. I wanted to get out there and test them for you guys. I had no expe expectations for them. I'll be honest. I'm just mad looking at most of those lures that are direct knockoffs. I understand that you can get mega bass baits you know from overseas and you not spend any money and like i get it but there's also the the element for me that grinds my gears if you will is that people would come to bat for this gigantic chinese knockoff organization and come hate on me because i'm telling you guys that i would suggest in my opinion that you buy locally that you also go most of those lures are dog crap and most of those lures are trash. Look at the cicada, man. The cicada's trash. You're going to sit here and tell me the number one most popular lure on there, which is that lure or the other top water I got, are like good lures. They're not. They're, they're absolutely not. They're bad lures. Um, the, the Bellows Guild, they said like, oh, he, he contradicted himself because the Bellows Guild did what it's supposed to do. I said that in the video. I said it. This is so oh, look, loaded. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Um I'm not impressed because it's a knockoff, you guys. So I feel there we go. We're we're Dude, loading that this up for Robert stacked. here. What is on the back there? Oh, the cray, uh, the cast cray, cast the purple cray. alien cray. blood. Yep, yep. Sick. Sweet. So we got Robert hooked up. So I just wanted to call it out um, to my to my Timu fanboys out there. Like, hey, get get over it. <laughs> like, like I did. No, I'm keeping Throw my duck. what. Throw a duck. No, the ducks stay with us. The ducks stay with us. Um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day... Ducks you know, fly together. Ducks fly together. Quack. That's exactly what it is. Uh, no, we, we caught fish on the Timu lures. I, I'm on my lake. I feel like I can catch anything on this lake with any lake, to be honest. But um, they do work. Do they work well? Most of them don't. The ducks swam sideways. I don't know if anybody saw that or cared about it. Nobody commented on that. Uh, 
You got a one. You got a one propeller cicada. You got a one um, propeller that I mean, goes look, in a circle, look, like, dude. It's the, I think the whole the whole video, the whole thing of the video should have been, all right. We know we're buying knockoffs slash cheaper baits. Mm -hmm. My expectations are that most of these are not going to be of a quality or worth even the low price. Some of them might be, and that's exactly what happened on the water. You had that one knockoff yeah. um, that for the G crack that I thought was actually solid, even though some of them were bent, uh, but yeah. they, they were really cheap. That little pink bait, sure, it works. It's a plastic, no problem. Cheap bait, go buy it, great, good, good for you. Everything else did not work, should not be bought, is a gimmick. That's just my opinion, man. Yeah, no, totally. And and South Jersey Fisherman points out too, like some of these, uh, some of these, a lot of these brands make their stuff in China anyways. Like I, sure. I get it. I yep. hear you. Still, I want to support the creator is my point. I want to support who came up with the bait and then had it made over there. Sure. But, even... but also, can we support locally? No, that's not true. Like sometimes, but sometimes. All, but also there's just mm -hmm. crap baits out there. And that there, the there's just like, trash baits. Like, the just robot trash baits. like a whole bunch of what we got was just trash baits. Like the duck was not a good bait. I'm sorry. The cicada is, was not a good bait. This is a prop robot fish. It's a bad, it's a the bad robot. Bait. The prop robot fish is a bad bait. Now, again, though, there are some. So like, if you're careful, you can find some value. And if that's something you're interested you in, search. you should, you should go do that. And you should, but it was more of like a buyer beware, not a, everything is bad or everything was great. Like it was a buyer beware. It's like, you you yeah. can get tricked because of a picture on the internet, shockingly enough. Um, and something that's usually priced too good to be true could that it that is. could be exactly it what is. it is. And so that was all the that was that was the point. But it's weird for someone to be like, You shut up, team is the best. Like, wow. Yeah, wait a minute. It was, gosh dang, that was so weird. weird. What one guy just really hammered me in the comments and I finally just gave up. Uh but it's like this is not worth my time and I'd hope it's not worth their time, but why are we defending the company? Am I not a, I like, this is what we're here to do. We give our opinions on stuff. You can like it. You can not like it. You can agree with it. You can not agree with it. We're just stating our opinions. That's it. Um, but yeah, like, so I don't know if I came off negative in that post. Cause I was, I was mad. At Great. Them. I didn't, I didn't like those words and I'm allowed Whatever. to. <laughs> this is America. <laughs> it was kind of crazy. I was shocked. It got, it got heated. We're going to have to make another Timu video just for reels, and we'll just see how that goes. <laughs> my opinion is wrong, Jeremy. You're right. My opinion is always wrong. I like to put my wrong opinion right here on the internet for everyone. Uh, yeah, whatever. We're going to do more Timu stuff and make the Timu fanboys probably real mad. Um, oh, let's do it. <laughs> Burn it down. All right, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, I'm glad we did the extra stuff. We we went that Me extra too. mile. We, we made it work. You guys brought the the crew, or you opened 47 browsers with 47 accounts Dude. on YouTube, and that's fine, too. This is uh, the nicest Monster Bass bag I've ever received, and I'm sending it out. It's my last one. I broke my last one just Sad. yesterday. I went to the bank, and I broke my last Monster Bass zipper bag, man. Bring them back, Rick. That's all I'm saying. Um, all right. We got more content coming from you guys uh, pretty soon. Friday, we've got the kayak reviews. Next week, we'll have a fishing vid and then probably an unboxing vid, vid because Paul has like 400 pounds of BFS stuff, ultralight finesse. 400 ounces. They're all very light. Oh, you're right. It's light. It's finesse. My bad. 400 ounces of BFS stuff, <laughs> which is big freaking scam uh, stuff, right? For finesse. I love it. Uh, so we'll have that coming your way. And then next week, we'll have a fun episode as well. Lots of stuff we didn't get to cover today that we can get into then. Uh, but yeah, end of the day, you guys are awesome. Thanks for being awesome. Keep being awesome and keep the Timu fanboys down. Thanks. See you guys next week. Chaz, take us out. <laughs> Took a swing at a wrecking ball and I prayed for my downfall and I found a way to reconcile cause in my heart it's not worthwhile it's a bloody battlefield